your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Esperdito! Esperdito! He must be inside the house, David. Probably putting the plumber to work. I didn't even know we had a plumber. We've got to have a plumber to install the steam riser line in the wall we've cut open. I didn't even know we had a steam riser line. What did you think it does? Stay in the cellar? What stays in the cellar? The steam, of course. Only it doesn't. It rises. That's the point. David, we're going to have steam. I thought we were going to have oil. We are. Well, what do you know? I'm beginning to learn all kinds of things about houses. Darling, you're practically an architect. At this rate, in another five years, you'll be able to design a first-class birdhouse all by yourself. A birdhouse? Well, maybe not a fancy birdhouse. Nothing with plumbing, you understand, but a... (laughs) One room, common, everyday garden variety birdhouse. At least when I build a birdhouse, it'll have four walls. Not like the houses some people I know build. Ours does look a little discouraging, doesn't it? Discouraging? Well, we'll have that wall backed up before the end of next week. Uh Uh-huh, maybe. If we can find Mr. Paradiso. I knew there was going to be an if. Hey, there's Mr. Paradiso now. And your wall is still flat on the ground. Uh, Mr. Paradiso. Uh, hello, Martin. Good morning, Mr. Paradiso. You don't have to leave everything you're doing just to say hello. But I like it. Hello. I like it, too, Mrs. Norton. It's good to get a breath of nice, clean city air. We left New York hours ago, Mr. Paradiso. We couldn't hold our breath all the time. You married yourself quite a little car, didn't you, Mr. Norton? I like that. You mean you think she's joking? Sure, about holding her breath. Uh, wasn't she? Mm, well, what's the main trouble this morning, Mr. Paradiso? Now, you see that wall there? Why isn't it up? Because you haven't got the steam riser line in. Say, hey, which one of you two is the architect? He is. All of this adds up, I suppose, to what you're trying to say. Your your plumber didn't show up. Right, the first time, Mr. Norton. Yes, you are the architect, after all. The plumber didn't show up. But he, he can't do that. Oh, can't he? Maybe the plumber's sick. Maybe, but he's probably tying trout flies or else he just doesn't like work. Well, can't you call him up on the phone and tell him he just has to be here? We need him. He knows we need him. It's just got something else to do that he thinks is more important. Well, how bad is it? Can you uh, juggle the work around a little? Uh, That's just it. I can't. What's he mean, David? Well, the trouble is that if Mr. Paradiso has to go ahead with the other parts of the job now and... This very cold weather, it's going to cost him more than he figured. Oh, no. Trouble is also, I'm already cutting so close to the line on costs here that I don't see how I can hold down to the estimate. You mean because the plumber doesn't show up today, it's going to cost us a lot more money? Well, it isn't Mr. Paradiso's fault that the plumber doesn't show up. Well, it isn't our fault either. The lady's got something there. And it wasn't our fault that the wall was so complicated that it cost lots more money to fix it than we expected in the first place. But it's our house, darling. You've got to plan on it. And when they dig the well... Won't be our fault if they have to go down hundreds and hundreds of feet. Now, wait a minute, though. Oh, David, we thought it was going to cost us $8,000. And then we paid ten. And the repairs are costing almost twice as much as we wanted them to. And now, all because a plumber doesn't darling, show up. Darling, this is our house. I know it's our house, but I'm beginning to think that maybe it shouldn't be. Maybe it's too much for us. Claudia, this is where we're going to live. This, this will be our lives. How can it be too much? I don't see why our lives have to be so full of troubles. Troubles? Darling, this is nothing, nothing compared to the trouble the peace people must have had in 1760 building this house in the first place. They may have had it harder, but they didn't have it any colder. I think the trouble with your wife is that she's cold, Mr. Norton. Is that it, Claudia? It's a lot of it. David, I'm sorry. You're sorry? Here I am making brilliant speeches about houses and plumbers while you're standing around freezing to death. Fine sort of husband I turned out to be. You're the most wonderful sort of husband in the world, and I'm going to give you a kiss. Well, 
and stopped talking about it. Mrs. Norton won't be any warmer in this house with a wall out. Why doesn't she drive down the road to the Brewster filling station and sit inside there? I want to stay here and hear what you, you decide. You are staying here a second longer, Skinny Malik. Now, you stay here a little too long already. <laughs> Besides, we may not have to decide anything at all. If the plumber shows up this afternoon, he'll be able to finish enough by tomorrow so we can really get started on that wall. Oh, I know he won't. This house just isn't built that way. I know that by now the poor plumber probably has something terrible the matter with him and he won't be able to plumb for months. Well, you leave that to us. Now, I'll, I'll drive you down to the Brewsters. I'll drive myself down. You will not. I'll drive you. Fine. Then I'll drive you back here and we can go back and forth and back <laughs> oh, and forth. all right, all right, all right. Drive yourself, but drive carefully. I'll keep my eyes on the road and my hand on the wheel and my feet on the gas. That is what I'm afraid of, darling. Now, no <laughs> fancy business. Don't try to park the car. Park the car? Well, that's the last thing I do. All I ever do, David, is stop it. Ain't got none. May I come in? Lady, we ain't got it. It says the Brewster service station, but we ain't got service. No gas, no oil, no water, no air, no nothing. All I want to do is to get warm. How's that? I just want to get warm. Well, we ain't got anything else but heat. We got that. Come in. Oh, that feels wonderful. It'll feel better if you close the door. Oh, I, I will. You do look kind of cold, lady. Why don't you come over here and sit by the oil stove? Gives off plenty of heat. Oh, that's even better already. Right cold day, all right. It's going to be even colder next week, I think, too. Oh, that's bad, isn't it? Yep, it is. If you don't like cold. I don't. No. I don't think anybody does. Might as well read a newspaper, I guess. Maybe a magazine. Thank you, Mr. Brewster. I ain't Brewster. I'm Jessup. Cornelius Jessup. Oh, well, I'm glad to know you, too. Thanks. It's a pleasure. Certainly is a funny service station in a way, isn't it, Mr. Jessup? Hmm? How funny? Well, you haven't got any gas, no oil, no water, or anything else. But in spite of it, you're really very nice to people. Thanks. We ain't really open today. Oh, I see. Yeah. I mean, I think I see, but, uh... I can see what you're thinking. You're wanting to know what I'm doing here if we ain't open. Oh, no, Mr. Jessup. I'm sure you must have a very good reason for I'm being keeping here. an eye on things for my cousin. Oh, you're Mr. Brewster's cousin? No, I ain't. Brewster's dead. Been dead ten years. I'm sorry. Nothing to be sorry about. Mean old penny pension, no good skin flint. Did his best to cheat my cousin when he bought this place from him. Didn't get away with it, though. I'm glad. I can see what you're thinking. You can? You're thinking, why isn't my cousin here instead of me? Oh, no, Mr. Jessup. I, I'm sure your cousin has just as good a reason for not being here as you have for taking his place. Yeah. <clears throat> my cousin, uh, Philip, who owns this uh, service station, mm -hmm. is uh, filling in for his brother-in-law, Sam Jones, who owns the diner in town. You see, I was right. And um, if you want to know why I'm not filling in for Sam Jones myself, it's because I can't cook, and my cousin Philip can't. I knew there was a very good reason. Yeah. And if you want to know why Sam Jones uh, can't be at his diner today, it's because he's got to drive his wife's sister, Sally Lou Martin, to Bridgeport to get a wedding dress because she's uh, got to be married next week. Married? Mm hmm Oh. If you want to know why I don't uh, drive Sally Lou to Bridgeport myself, save all this jumping around, that's because we Jessops ain't talking to the Martin branch of the family. Now you know everything and you don't have to ask no more questions. But I haven't asked any. Ain't you? Not one question. Weddings. Don't you think they're wonderful? That they are is a question. And here's my answer. I think they're a waste of time. Why they 
can't just stand in front of the justice of the peace and get hitched and save all this trouble. I'm danged if I know. Oh, it's a little trouble. But weddings are worth it, I think. Little trouble? <laughs> Here I am, perfectly good plumber. I ought to be working today, only instead I got to be... You're a plumber? Yep, sure I am. I'm supposed to be working down there on the river road on that old Tucker place. Those city people bought. I sure could use the money. Only I got to stay here and stay. Mr. In. Jessup, do you know how badly they need you down there at that old Tucker place? Pretty bad, I guess. You don't need a plumber every day, but, lady, when you need one, you need one bad. I'm Mrs. Norton. I'm half of the city people who bought the Tucker place. And, Mr. Jessup, you just haven't any idea how important you are to us. Sure is a shame. Somebody's got to stay here and keep an eye on things at the service station. But, 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 but you haven't anything to serve. Well, somebody might call up for help getting a tire fixed. Only there isn't a chance of that happening because nobody's out driving today. Mr. Jessup, could you... I mean, Mrs. Could... Norton, how, how long can you stay here? I could stay here all day. Mrs. Norton, you stay right here. <clears throat> I'm going to get to work right now on your house. But, Mr. Jessup, what'll I do if something happens? Nothing will happen, Miss Norton. You just stay here, answer the phone. Only it won't ring. I'm going right down and get your house built. That's man's work. But, Mr. Jessup... Many thanks, Miss Norton. It's just like money in the bank to me. To me, too. Goodbye. Well, here we are. Oh... Mr. Jessup said you wouldn't ring. Oh, you. Oh, I promised him I'd answer. Why did you have to ring just after he left? Brewster Service Station. Hello? Yes? What? Oh, no. Three Oaks Road. You've got a flat tire and you want me to fix it? But I I'm taking the place of the plumber, Mr. Jessup. You see, his cousin, Mr. Martin, had to go to a wedding, and I'm the... This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. What happens in your house when unexpected guests drop in? Is there a flurry of activity? Do you have to send one of the children out for refreshments? Or do you keep plenty of Coke on ice for just such moments? Now that there's plenty of Coca-Cola again, it pays to order it by the case. Then you can meet social emergencies the way you like to have them met, with a gracious, easy smile that says, Welcome. It's grand to see you. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>